from the twisted realm of science and the darkest pits of reason comes chilling tales of godlessness. Bear witness to the unfathomable terror that is... The Good Atheist! Going through a bit of a weird moment, I guess, this week. I'm uh, I'm single again, so that's that's the more surprising thing I think. You know, mm-hmm. you go from being in a relationship to not being in a relationship, and you try to figure out what the real difference is. I suppose I still haven't figured it out. So I'm it hasn't sunk in. I'm ima- I'm imagining. Yeah. Well, you know what? As soon as the prospect of no more regular sex sex finally does sink in, and you get that crushing feeling of wondering, can I ever do it again? <laughs> do what again? Get sex again. Wow, that's a pretty... That, I, don't, I don't worry that much about it. There's never that narrative. Well, you, you, that's, that's because... You I know were, I can, you tra- were, I can you trick were, someone. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, forgive me for having those impossible standards of mine. <laughs> no, the, the idea is more like I spent so much of my youth single. And, and this was not a choice. This was not as though I was uh, some kind of Buddhist monk here. Mm. Uh, this was choiceless singlehood for many years so you st- you still have that i guess pathetic younger self that goes like you can't do this be you'll never get a girl be oh yeah that negative nelly living in everybody's head he's such a downer isn't he, he is a downer why does he exist in the first place let me tell you there is no evolutionary advantage to having that little motherfucker in the back of your head oh, saying "Dale oh, yourself buddy oh trust me there there's many advantages to having that little voice going don't do that or you'll fail no, because you should, you should not have that voice with with girls because that's this bad that's bad mm. i i just i keep remembering all those missed opportunities because you just figure why, why would she want to talk to me? Stupidest question ever. That's the worst question a person can ask themselves ever. Yeah, that's a bit much. I agree with you there. And, and you know what? Like, Okay, obviously I'm not going to say the doubting yourself is in don't climb that tree that looks really rickety or don't go in that building. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's the right application. Because the- <laughs> you never know what's going to be in that building. That's true. That's true. It's but, you know, obviously it's going to carry on sometimes with your social interactions, but... Uh, I think it's when the social interaction is that it's uh, usually typically really wrong. I mean, it's more on the side of panic. Mm. For the most part, you, we are panicky fucking animals. It's like, ah, oh no, someone might not like me. Ah! Yep. Uh, let me tell you something. I don't know if there's a lot of other animals out there that really worry that much. About whether or not everybody else likes them yeah. or not. Yeah, we're a little psychotic for that. <laughs> <laughs> we just want to be loved. I can dig it. You know, talking about being loved, uh, I put up a uh, bonus show last or this Tuesday and uh, the idea was that I wanted to ask people who wanted to fill out surveys uh, to do so in exchange for the bonus show because I figured well you know people want to listen to the bonus show but not everybody can pay and I want to figure out those people that can't pay why can't they pay I thought that was probably a pretty smart idea Mm. Uh, just at least to 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 get people to to talk to me but you know in doing so and and part of the reason why I did this was because I had that presentation on Sunday at that PodCamp Montreal thing. Hopefully, any of you guys listening in Montreal is going gonna, is gonna to go there. Uh, go to the site to get the details because uh, they're not in front of me. And you're probably not going to come. Meet the, whole, <laughs> meet, meet the whole gang. Meet Jake and Ryan. I'll be, I'll be the one with the oh, Jeff's going to be there, the too. Oh, Jeff? be, well, he's going he's gonna to have to be there now. Yeah, it's true. We would kill him if he wasn't there. I know, I know. I'm like, look, people are, people are starting to associate Jeff with the show, so... He has to sort of accept that he has a role here, mm. and uh, if he's not comfortable with that, that's too bad. And actually, for the next two weeks, it's going to be Jeff or, or some a combination of Jeff and something else, because I'm going to be away. It'll probably be Jeff if I can force and twist his arm uh, to do it. And uh, we might have to just bang out like a whole bunch of them right in a row. Maybe after seeing all the uh, potential pod camp groupies, he'll, uh, he'll see the light. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not counting too, on too many groupies showing up. But uh, <laughs> the, the great thing about sending out surveys was just being able to hear uh, f- directly from you guys. And there's a couple, there, I made a few decisions uh, for this show based on some of your uh, responses. Because one of the questions that I asked was, what is the thing that you dislike the most about the show? Mm. Now, what do you think that was? Uh, please do more research. Please, well, you know what? Please, that, please, that fell, please, that fell, please, that fell as number. More. That that fellow's number two. Number two. That was number two. That's crazy. It's kind of like you find out what is it? What what kills more, sp- smoking or or car accidents? Smoking. Wow. Yeah. That's that's kind of surprising. Oh yeah, it's well, a lot more. <laughs> mm. Um. 
it's like a hundred thousand or something insane when forty thousand but, but, but he, here's actually an example of why we can't do more research because I just asked that question you didn't have any time to research it We're it's all, a good thing that I already knew the, the 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 program that we usually lay out is we'll talk about this article and we look over the article and we read it up and we do a little bit of digging. Above and beyond that, though, it usually gets pretty hairy. We get off on tangents of tangents. It's uh, it's difficult to know what you, the hell you're well, going to be the, talking the about thing, on the, any given show. The whole thing is people didn't actually mind that. So, I mean, the research was part of it. Obviously, people are going to be like, God, I wish you could always be right, and, and we don't take that position. We're going to make mistakes. And uh, if, if they're pointed out, we will correct it on the show. I don't care if it's permanently on you know, a podcast somewhere that I was wrong in my life. Oh, no. Being wrong is so horrible. I'm like, being wrong is just part of it. It's no big deal. You don't need to have some kind of attitude saying, just make sure you're right every time. I'm just, we're just going to have a conversation about religion. For the most part, it's not too bad. But, you know, once in a while we do stumble. Hmm. Uh, but the number one complaint was actually people were, 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 were saying that they didn't like the, the, you know, the strong advertising. The kind of like the hard sell. Mm. And, uh, and, I, and I figured out why, because most of the people that said that they really didn't like the hard sell were people that had lower income brackets and didn't spend as much money online. And, you know, even the people that make a lot of money also don't spend a lot. So you're usually, you know, dealing with a lot of low margins. People can't afford it. It's a low part of their priorities. And they're just, stop bugging me about it. I would if I could is basically the, that, that whole attitude. So there's still an endearing element to it. It's like, we love you guys. <laughs> but stop fucking trying to sell me on this shit. I'm not going to buy it. And you know what? I can understand and respect that, which is why I've taken the decision that we're no longer going to hard sell uh, the, the, uh, the bonus podcast. It's not necessary. By now, I mean, you've heard about it uh and i'm just gonna make sure that it's more prominent on the site fuck you if you don't like me writing about it i'm still gonna write about it <laughs> <laughs> gotta make money bitches but yeah no more no more really hard selling it's not necessary anyways because what i'm trying to do now my new focus uh since reading all these surveys and since doing research on 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 different ways to to go about monetizing uh things i'm trying to think about new ways to be able to Change it from simply a money exchange for membership to maybe something else like a labor exchange or, uh, you know, for filling the surveys or, or maybe being able to find, uh, you know, sponsorship from other companies that, you know, you get an ad uh, sponsored version uh, if, if you go that route. I mean, there's a couple few, there's a few options that I want to try out. He's a mad scientist <laughs> doing crazy experiments. I am a little bit of a mad scientist, yeah. But you know what? That's the whole, the, 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 the internet is a very, young medium and a lot of people are still trying to figure out how to make money me included uh i i want to do this for a living i don't want to do it kind of like as one of those bullshit hobbies because you guys remember what it was like when i was doing this as a hobby don't you fucking one show every uh, like a month yeah <laughs> when you work nine to five and you have to do a bunch of stuff it's very unpleasant to try to come back and, and feel energized to do a show anyways enough about your sad life you want to talk about uh -huh, you want to talk about god or you want to talk some more about some surveys before we move on what i want to talk about is something that probably everybody already knows and that's like what did people like about the show because that was that was another big question that we had i mean we had our we had some intuition about what people like about the show but i mean there's, there's not always a lot of two-way dialogue that goes along with, with you guys. You know, you're, you're, you're podcast listeners. The podcast world is still a very, you know... Uh, One-directional. It's very Web 1.0, you know? It's, maybe in the future there's going to be some kind of mass conversations and going on in real time. I don't know. Sort of like Twitter but with voice. Wouldn't that be crazy? And, like, they'll put it out over the airwaves and you can buy some kind of device that you tune it in. And you could, like, phone in and stuff, and it'd be live. You're be, listening to the Jacob Channel. They'd be building gigantic antennas, and they'd be... Hey, yeah, I joke. don't know. That's, that actually sounds like it was a popular mechanic written in the 1950s, estimating what year 2000 would be like. <laughs> there would be giant broadcasting towers. Boop, 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 broadcasting our thoughts in the year 2003. We, est we estimate by 2010 they will be four miles tall. <laughs> okay, the, anyways, the... the the thing that people like the most about the show, I think, is, uh, from what I understand from the survey, is they like the conversational dialogue. They like the fact that we're, you know, not stuck up our own asses, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Is that respectful? <coughs> like that? No? 
Okay, probably <laughs> not. We're not respectful. And the thing that I got the most, this is what I'm picking up from you guys, and this is what I'm going to make sure that I have at least always a little segment for that, is that I think to a large degree most of you listen to it because you want to vent out. You know, something happened maybe at work, maybe around the home where somebody said something really fucking stupid, and you couldn't say anything, and you're like, God damn it, how am I going to vent? I need to vent right now. And, you know, you don't, have any, you don't have access to Metallica or something. Or maybe you want something a little bit more highbrow. Apparently we're more highbrow than heavy metal. <laughs> but we're the, we're the vent ragers, you know? People, they channel some of that anger through us and feel, you know, good through that. So I suppose it's kind of like a drug based on aggression. That's, that's like what it. we do. So uh, that's, that's kind of the angle. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I can dig it. This ain't hate speech. It's just like, a, why the fuck are these people so retarded? Like, what the hell? Speaking of retarded, I think that we should segue to talking about a movie mm. uh, that we watched yeah, last night called Time Changer. And uh, do you want me to run through the plot or do you want to do it? Well, just 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 as an understanding point, uh, th this is a... Uh, well, explain to me the funny... Like, this is a hardcore fundamental... Christian film, like, yeah, that's uh, like right. A, and that's it's, right. A, it's a it's a it's a it's a fiction film. It's not a documentary or anything like that. It's, no, uh, no, it, it's done by a, a a director that had done kind of a similar rapture esque kind of style movie. Like a this is actually more whimsical and positive than the last than the messages in his last movie. I forget what it's called. Outer something, Outer Reach, or hmm. doesn't matter. It's a piece of shit. Probably most people didn't see it. The only reason I know about it is because Jeff suggested it, and I don't even want to know. Where he heard about it, okay? But uh, his secrets are his secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let me exp I'm going to try to explain the plot of Time Changes the best way that I can. Uh, it's 1890, and there is a uh, Bible professor at some kind of college who writes uh, a manifesto of some kind. And in his manifest, basically he writes that the values of the church need to be um, proclaimed and, and exalted um, without necessarily referencing Jesus or, or Christianity in general. They're like, the morals are good. We should teach the morals even to people who don't have the same it, kind of religious beliefs. It, it, it's basically the, the whole attitude of we, can t we should teach the morals without the Jesus part because not everybody likes the Jesus part. So it's basically kind of like the secularization of, yeah, of that's the morality the, of things. And the, that's the, other, the implication. Yeah. The, then another stuffy freaking doctor is saying... Well, you know who the doctor is? First of all... <laughs> The doctor guy character was that captain guy in the love boat. That's why he looked familiar. You know, the, the love boat. I, he was the captain. Wow. Okay, so the captain of the love boat mm -hmm. decides that, no, he doesn't want to endorse the, the, the book because they need to have everybody on the board endorse his book. And everyone's at first is like, yes, yes. Then then the ca good captain walks in and he starts just talking. He goes on a fucking tirade. It's like three minutes long about... To disassociate Jesus with this will be a horrible thing, and you just need to believe me. You can't do this. And at first, everyone's like, oh, well, he's just an, a crackpot, and he's being unreasonable, so he's made to look crazy at the beginning half of the movie. Now, but then it turns out that he has a time machine. He has a fucking time machine. <laughs> so show them who's crazy. Yeah, and it's probably the worst time machine you've ever seen in your life. Like, a couple boat oars and some weird switches here. I mean, it, the, the time machine in the novel, the time machine, sounded more complex than this motherfucking thing. Mm. You know, a little bit more imagination. I actually think they stole the, most of the design ideas from the original time machine book, mm. probably to avoid any kind of lawsuits or who knows what. But anyways, to, to sum up the rest of the film, uh, the love boat captain sends the author forward in time to our days to see how... to, to see what the world would be like if they with... disassociated Christ from everything basically we're going to send you to the secular future and and it's funny cuz they sent it's basically they send us to now and, well, uh, 2003. 2003. Okay, 2003. Is when I, it was and, and it's just a nightmare. It's just horrible. Actually, what's funny is it's really not because it is. It, it, it is very much like today. Like he meets people, they all seem very friendly. He goes to church, and everyone seems very nice. But there's a couple of scenes where all of a sudden he starts realizing that the world is an evil place. The main scene with the crazy music, because I, I have to admit that the score was fucking decent. Okay, the score is the only thing about this movie that's decent. Mm -hmm. But he's listening to this oh, me, do me, no, this kind of fucking music going on in the background, watching a hotel room TV. Now I can only imagine. What that man saw 
but then I guess he decides that uh, he's gonna have a pretty big hotel bill. I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> he's well, like, he's oh. gonna pay with gold doubloons. <laughs> I went to a hotel in the future and I watched an entire night of pornography. I'm shocked and appalled. <laughs> I believe I was witnessing the last days. <laughs> Here's what. Here's something I love though. Before he sends him into the future, the guy, the the time machine guy, the the love boat captain, he's saying, "Well, the divorce rates are skyrocketing. Why, it's five percent, and children are being more disrespectful." <laughs> I'll tell you what. When your biggest problems in your in in your society is that the divorce rate is the is is higher and kids are mouthy. That's pretty good. Worry about it when everybody's just murdering each yeah, other. Yeah, that's crazy a bad. Styles. That's a bad thing. You know, mm. murdering each other, particularly when they're murdering each other. I don't know for their religious beliefs. But it's just funny. Thought, this this movie seemed to be made for the kind of Christian that 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 speaks like brings up verses on a regular basis. Whenever you're talking about morality, they'll they'll spout actual gospel. Well, David's uh, no, no, Corinthians no, no, no. said this. <laughs> blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> Turn to Romans for this solution. Turn to it. No, <laughs> my answer to you: read another book. You know, look at my library shelf. I, got, I read a few more. Why don't you come back when you read, like, more than one? Hmm. I'm not saying you got to read, like, a zillion. Just read a couple more. But the good thing about this movie is it, it's actually enjoyable to watch in a it's-so-bad-it's-good kind of way. You'll understand. Except for the first half, which seems to have the same theme, like, repeated twice, where he goes to the guy's house... Because apparently, I guess, I mean, it, it kind of feels at the time when he invites him over to his house that he's going to rape him, though. Like, it just really honestly feels that way. He's like, you must come. I cannot explain. Come to my house. You'll know more there. Hey, why is there all this wine and this fucking viola music? What's happening here? You must come in the bedroom. You I, must. I don't know. You saw, I think you saw an entire homosexual under... Well, just from the main actor guy, the guy with the beard... He was either overselling it, or I don't think he's ever really seen what a straight guy is supposed to act like. It, with his very fancy kind of moves, and be like, oh, my goodness. And it's like, whoa, buddy, easy, take it yeah, easy. Yeah, but you, you got to understand, like, bad actors, sometimes that's just how they act. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's probably what's setting off the gaydar, is just I, their, my their bad acting is... Guy. No, no, come on now. I mean, I don't know. Gaydar's off. I even yeah. checked his IMDb, no spouse. I don't know, but yeah, I, I would definitely recommend. It. I think you can you can find it floating around the internet in one form or another. So, oh, you, uh, know, you know what I love? Okay, here's here's a part that I wanted to talk about in length was the fact that right at the end he has to go back to the alleyway where he was originally transported. By the way, the him being transported on today's world, it's not even a special effects. It's a pan away from a fucking garbage can. Like, congratulations, special effects department, you nailed it. You nailed it. Anyways, with your fish out of water tail here, basically at the end he has to go back to the same alley. Who cares why? But uh, essentially, these two cop guys, secularists, I guess, <laughs> try to uh, you know try to stop him and say, "Well, you're coming downtown. You need to answer a few questions." Because guess what? He gives people uh, an alibi, and that name does not exist in their system. And they're doing their job. They're like, who the fuck are you? You're not telling people who you are. Yeah, it's a Why police state, with? man. They got that part right. Police state. Whatever. Distrust the government. Okay, fine. <laughs> Anyways, the guy was a bit of a nut job, too. I would have probably locked him up. Uh, but right before he's taken away, he decides that he's going to lie. And you know what? This is funny because you watch, you see a lot of Christians do this, is that they figure that if they lie for Jesus... It's all good. Oh, you're looking too much into an no, innocent, I mean, funny look, joke. Look, 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 look. It, it's, not, it's not a funny joke when it happens all the fucking time. Where a person's like, well, it's okay if I pretend to be an atheist and go on all these sites spewing all this really fucking horrible shit uh, because I'm doing it for God. I'm, there, are, there are Christians engaged in this kind of activities all the time. And I have to just wonder, like, what, if, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Do you think that you are morally righteous in doing this? Honestly, I, I'm not going around disguised as a Christian doing that shit. Grow up. Grow the fuck up. I think you've got some unresolved issues that you're, that you're imprinting onto this film. <laughs> My it, no, it's a, it, it, look, uh, I'm not going to say that they're sending a message, but the reason, look, look at it, before, if you say it's a tongue-in-cheek kind of thing, he's like, well, God's coming to take me away, and then all of a sudden he gets teleported back to the future. So the two guys remain there saying like, oh, no, I think we missed the rapture, which is another one of those bullshit messages where it says, well, 
you know, you'll you'll you're only a fake atheist. There are no atheists in foxholes. Once the rapture comes, that'll show you non-believers. Yeah, the movie actually has a whole bunch of those nice little jabs that are very enjoyable. That's that's the whole thing. You'll get a real kick out of it. And actually, do you want to talk about this quickly? Year one. What was that? Was that what it was, it was called? Yeah, year one. That's yeah, right. The, With uh, uh, Jack, Jack Black, Black and uh, Michael, Cena. Michael Cera. 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 What did you say, Cena? Cena. I get confused. <laughs> Rustlers, little kids. Wow, they're like the complete opposite body types. <laughs> I would love to see the two of them together. Yeah, and like maybe like some kind John of... John Cena and fucking Maybe, maybe they could do a rema- uh, remake of the Schwarzenegger DeVito movie, Twins. Yes, I like it. It makes no sense, so I like it. <laughs> oh, but yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about this, because it actually has a, uh, a very hilarious religious centering oh it's, yeah it's, yeah yeah it, it's very tongue-in-cheek kind of like does god exist all this religion stuff is bullshit very hilarious yeah Throughout- at first i thought it was just going to be one of those caveman movies where you know it's almost like the flintstones kind of bad where they're saying well let's just go back in the beginning and let's have fun with this we're gonna show them run away from dinosaurs yeah and... this is gonna be hilarious i was like if it's like this i'm gonna turn this motherfucker off instantly but uh and and when it first started because they were like uh it, it starts off i guess in kind of a garden of eden thing and he eats an apple uh forbidden apple so at first i was like oh no is this gonna be one of those horrible moral parables Evan almighty type god talking yeah. yeah that was what i was afraid of but no they they kept it funny they kept it funny it was almost like the uh like the a good version of the movie the, the 10 rules or something like that it was a movie in, uh, or just 10 i think is what it was called it was supposed to be a movie based on the 10 commandments it was terrible nobody watched it I don't even remember its name. It was that awful. More research needed. <laughs> nah, don't even research that part. There have been plenty of movies based on, on, on sort of biblical stories, or at least partial parables. But uh, this one is actually enjoyable. I must say, I laughed. And I was coming into this skeptical, people. Coming into this very skeptical. But anybody who reads the Bible and who, uh, or, or who has read it and, and, and dislikes it as much as we do, would very much like this movie. Especially pay attention to Hank, Hank Azaria's Abraham. He is bang on. <laughs> bang on crazy. Like, you know Abraham was that fucking crazy. Yep. Uh, it's quite wonderful. Yeah, just, number, just endless religious references just making fun of it is awesome. Really, I, I, yeah, can't say enough. <laughs> thumbs thumbs up go see it okay now it's going to be a short show today uh like i said we got to prepare for uh the presentation we are going to be taping it though so you guys are going to have kind of a bit of a extra bonus edition the video format yeah, of so this. if you guys aren't sick already of us just talking nonstop about this stuff we're gonna have another show where we talk nonstop about it well okay i know, I know that it's supposed to be an atheism show but remember i, I mean you guys are podcasting fans too i mean uh what podcasting fan's not going to be at least somewhat interesting by what the hell's going on in podcasting? Because it's, is it one of those mediums that is reaching kind of like its apex? Is it going to grow into something bigger? There's a lot of kind of uh, questions revol- uh, you know, evolving with this medium, and, and we've got to figure that shit out. I plan on cashing out and getting some kind of awesome TV show down the road. That's my plan. You want a TV show? No, well, I mean, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna sell us out. I'll obviously include you in on the deal. No, no, but I mean, you want to star in that TV show? Oh God, no. So God, no. Do you do you want to have a more I, handsome avatars? Do you want to do that? No. Puppet men? No, I'm just, I'm just not gonna go that route. So we'll see how that works. You won't even talk about yourself. No, I can't stop talking about me. <laughs> that's why it's gonna be so fun this weekend, at ten o'clock in the morning. Oh, that's fun. On Sunday morning, it's basically like oh. you're giving a freemium sermon. It's kind of cool. I dig it. You know what? I hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah, so you can you can have a sermon. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to talk about atheism stuff. I'm sure there's probably going to be some questions uh, related back to that because I'm just trying to fill it out with fill fill the room with my own fans. Let's mm. be honest here. <laughs> if you are in Montreal, goddamn it, show up. Uh, it's going to be a good time, anyways. And, and uh, uh, actually, just just a quick uh, thing before we go, I wanted to mention this quickly. One of the one of the good atheist fans got in touch with me on Facebook yesterday and was uh, telling me about uh, basically about how awesome the amazing meeting is, and telling me about this other th- convention called Dragon Con, which has basically what he calls a Dragon Con is like a collection of a whole bunch of different conferences together, so they pool together and get like. 60 that i don't know what the fucking more, uh, re- more research needed yeah so uh, but it's in atlanta uh so i think we can actually make it 
there really easily. We can. Yep. We can make it there. We can. Hey, where's uh, Atlantic City? Hmm? Where's Atlantic City? Uh, New Jersey. Is it? Yes. It's not in Atlanta? <laughs> no. It just makes sense to me that it should be. More research. More research. <laughs> uh, that was great. Okay, with that, we're going to wrap things up, and we're going to catch everybody for the bonus show. 